Okay, this is the beginning of a new chapter, chapter 4, which is over inverses, exponential, and logarithmic functions. So it is a whole new concept, something different than what we've been doing before. Um, but of course, math is foundational, so it does build upon itself. So it's not to say that the stuff that we learned previously we won't use. It's just um, because it's a whole new concept, uh, you may be able to grasp onto things a little bit easier than, let's say, for instance, the graphs. Okay. So um, the first thing that we want to talk about is a one-to-one -one function. So a one-to-one -one function is when each x value corresponds to only one y value, and each y value only corresponds to one x value. So normally, um, they say that if two x values are not equivalent to each other, then the y values should not be equivalent to each other. Or vice versa, if the two y values are equal to each other, then that means that the x values would have had to have been equal to each other. Okay. Um, so this one says deciding whether the functions are one to one or not. I'm actually going to use this version to decide whether or not they're one to one. So if I plug a into this expression, I get negative 3a plus 7. If I plug b into the same expression, I get negative 3b plus 7. Now I want to um, try to solve this equation for a. And once I get a by itself, if what is on the other side is b, then I have proved or shown that this function is in fact one to one. Now if I don't get a equal to b, then that means that the function was not one to one. So let's see what we get here. If I minus seven on both sides, remember my goal is to solve for a. So it happens to cancel on the right hand side as well. And then since I'm trying to isolate a, I'm gonna divide by negative three and that happens to cancel here as well. And I do get a equal to b. So that means that this function is one to one. Now let's try the next one. So again, if I plug in a, it's gonna look like the square root of 49 minus um, a squared. And if I plug in b, it's gonna look like the square root of 49 minus b squared. Now I'm solving for a, so the first thing I need to do is get rid of the square root by squaring both sides. And then I'll take the root away on the left-hand side, and it'll also take away the root on the right-hand side. Then I'm going to get rid of my constant by subtracting 49 on both sides. Then I'm going to get rid of my coefficient and divide by negative one on both sides. And then because it's squared, I wanna get just a by itself, I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. And that'll make the square go away. But remember, when you um, take the square root, you automatically get plus or minus. And the square root of b squared is b. So although I do get a equal to b, I also get a equal to negative b. And this is not supposed to happen. For one x value, you're only supposed to get um, one y value, right? So you can't have that x equals this and x equals this, okay? This can't happen. So this together means that the function is not one to one. So if you get something totally different. This one's okay. It's this one that's causing the problem. And the fact that you got two different things is causing the problem. Now, a visual way to tell, like if I was given a graph, is what's called the horizontal line test. So just like we have the vertical line test to decide whether a function is, I mean, whether a graph is a function, now we have what is called the horizontal line test, 
which will tell us if that function is one to one or not. So let's go ahead and go through some of those. So we do know for the vertical line test, this is a function. And according to the horizontal line test, since it only touches it one time, um, this is also a one-to-one -one function. Now here, again, if I do the vertical line test, it is a function, but if I do the horizontal line test, I hit it twice. I don't even have to do it more than once. If any, any vertical line, I'm sorry, if any horizontal line that I draw touches it more than once, then it is not one-to-one. -one. So although I could have drawn this horizontal line, which does only touch it once, I could have drawn another horizontal line anywhere else on the parabola, and I still would have touched the graph more than once. So that makes it not a one-to-one -one function. So here in general it says a function that is either increasing or decreasing on its entire domain, uh, and it gives you some examples, is one-to-one. -one. And if it's not, usually it's not one-to-one. -one. So notice here it's going down, 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 down the whole way, that's a one-to-one. -one. But here it's going up and then down, and that's not a one-to-one. -one. Okay. Now this is just kind of summarizing what we've already done. So if the y values are equal, then you should get the x values equal. Um, that means it's one to one. Uh, every y value corresponds to no more than one x value. Um, and then to show that a function is not one to one, find at least two x values that produce the same y value. Or you can sketch the graph and then use the horizontal line test. And then if a function either increases or decreases on its entire domain, then it's one to one. So we've got many ways to decide whether or not a function is um, one to one. However, they're going to ask us to determine whether some more functions are one to one. And they don't give it to us in function notation. For this, it's just a list of points, okay? And so then they want us to decide whether or not it's one to one. All you need to do is and actually this is down here is where it says it. Um, oh no, that's how you find. Oh, well it doesn't say it here. But basically you just want to get all the x values. And as long as all the x values are different, then it doesn't matter what the y values are going to be. Um, it is going to be considered a one to one. So you look at all the x values and none of them repeat. If you look at all the y values, those also, none of them repeat. So this is a one to one function. Now here, if I look at the x values, um, none of the x values repeat, but look at the y values. Those repeat and these repeat, which means this one is not one to one. Okay, and here in the table, notice none of these x values repeat and none of the y values repeat. So this one is also one to one. And then this is explaining how to find an inverse if you wanted to have, if it gave you the equation or the function, um, f of x equals blah, 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 then you would change the x and y's and then you'd be able to figure out what the inverse is. But for us, we just need to be able to graph the inverse. So one thing that we need to know about the inverse is if a function is one-to-one, -one, then the inverse does exist. And then the domain and ranges are like swapped. So the domain of f is the same as the range of f inverse. And the domain of f inverse is the same as the range of f. So if you can figure out the domain of f and the range of f, then you automatically know the others. You know the information about the inverse. However, normally to find the range is harder than finding the domain. So normally you find the domain of f and then you know the range of f inverse. You find the domain of f inverse and then you know the range of f, okay? And then because of that, um, an inverse is just basically switching the x and y. 
So if this point is on F, then when I switch it, that point should be on the inverse, okay? Now this is different from F to the negative one, which is one over F. That's not what this is saying. This is not a variable. This is a name for something, okay? It's the name of a function. If I use G, now I'm talking about a totally different function. So this is nothing more than a name. It is not a variable. It's different than when I have X to the negative one, which does equal um, X over positive one. Okay, so this is a notation, it's not an exponent. So F to the negative one, this thing here, is a notation and it means inverse of F. It is not a negative one exponent. Um, and then it says the same thing too, to find the inverse, replace F of X with Y, interchange the X and Y, and then solve for F inverse. We're not really gonna be doing that, but we are going to be expected to do this. It says F and F inverse are reflections of each other across the line Y equal to X. So we're definitely going to be using this information to do the example above. So it says graph the inverse of the given one to one function. Now that looks in the, it's supposed to be a solid dot, but because it's pencil and then the glare of the light, it's looking like an open dot on the video but these are two solid dots. And so if I take the coordinates of this solid dot, which is zero, zero, and the coordinates of this solid dot, which is one, two, three, four, and one, if I want the inverse, all I have to do is swap the coordinates. So if I swap zero, zero, it's still zero, zero. So my inverse is still gonna be there on that point. Um, and then, So my inverse will have that same exact point. However, if I swap for one, it'll become one, four. So one, and then one, two, three, four. And then I want to trace it, or I want to draw the graph so it's still doing that kind of thing. So I'm trying my best to draw it. But that would be the inverse, okay? So you basically take all the points of F and then swap them, and those will become the points of F inverse. And then you draw those points of F inverse, connect the dots, and then you should have the graph of the inverse.